Mets of, uh, last year when I was here. And uh, right away, I liked him. I liked his demeanor about life. I liked uh, the way he presented himself towards people. Summer has come and passed. The innocent can never last. Wake me up when September ends. Hello everyone, hi. So I have here my friend Sandra, she's helping me to, to make this video today. It's uh, much easier to have someone when I'm talking than just be by myself. So thank you Sandra. You're welcome Joseph, my pleasure. Okay. So, so I'm be going to be talking about uh, some of those experiences that happened to me uh, through my life of course. And it starts even with, uh, uh, even before I could walk, I was like 11 months old, and I remember receiving this uh, gift from my parents, you know. So I didn't have a lot of toys when I grew up as a child. So the one I got, it meant a lot to me. And I remember I was like this piece of wood with some spikes inside, like six spikes. I don't know, do you have these toys? And you have like a hammer. Wood, wooden hammer, and usually it's for boys, of course, so you being a girl, probably you don't no, never got this story. I don't remember nothing. But you were supposed to uh, push these spikes down with the hammer, mm -hmm. and then you flip it over, and you would do the reverse, reverse again, you know, push it down. So you had to just hammer it down and hammer it up again, off and on, you know? And I remember I would spend like hours and hours with these little toys. I would not put it down, you know, I just like it so much. So this was like a memory that stuck with me. And, uh, and it was very good memory. And I, I'm glad that my parents gave me these toys. Maybe that's why I become like a construction worker. <laughs> because I just like to, you know, work with my hands. So, and so I had this uh, beautiful memory as well when my parents both bring me to the beach, you know, to the sea because we live close by to the sea. So, a few times a week they would take me swimming and, you know, playing with the water and stuff like that. So I learned to swim when I was a young, early child. So, and, but the, Things that I remember about being a child was this uh, belief that I had that there was always somebody watching over me. So, you know, it was like inside of me that to know that there was someone wonderful looking for me. So I believed in God uh, when I was very young. And, uh, and then uh, it helped me a lot, you know, to grow up as in my childhood because I was just a little boy, very naive, very innocent, you know, compared to some of the older kids that I used to know around me. So, and um, so I remember my mom, she, the first day I went to school, I was like six years old, and uh, she brought me, she bought me some shoes, it was rubber shoes, you know. So I wore these shoes, so happy, you know, that she had bought for me. So I went to school. But when I went uh, out of school, there was like a storm out. It was raining a lot. I think you've been to Italy, and uh, have you heard, have you seen those storms that happen? Oh yeah, it's really, when, when there is a storm, it's real storm. God. I like, never saw something like that. I never Just seen last, it uh, last like, summer when I was there. Uh, you know, it's destroying everything. Yeah, imagine yeah. a little child hearing this thunders and lightnings mm. all around you and it looks like the sky is gonna break it down and fall on you. It's yeah. like it's frightening, you know. And, and so, but the funny part was that I couldn't walk with the shoes because it was some kind of material, rubber. It was very slippery, so I kept falling down. I was trying to run, you know, to go home. 
because of the stuff. <laughs> and I just <laughs> slip around and fall down. And then I get up and I just couldn't stand on my feet. It was like, you know, sleep it, it's sleep it. It's like, I said, what's going on? And I start crying, you know. I mean, what could I do? You know, it's like, I couldn't walk. And I cry, I cry. And I sit down on the ground because I couldn't even stand on my feet. And I don't know how many hours I stayed there. It looks like forever. And I was just crying, crying. And nobody seemed to really notice me or something. People were passing by and I was just crying there. So I was just like so hopeless. And I remember, you know, I just help, help, you know, I just cry like this, you know. I wasn't really praying because I didn't know how to pray, but I just feel like my crying was reaching some, you know, the sky and heaven. Somebody could hear me. And then after a while, my uncle happened to pass by that moment and he see me there sitting on the ground crying and said, what are you doing? You know? So he grabbed me and he took me home. So, but I, I see now like if it hadn't happened to pass by the day, I don't know what would happen to me. It's like, I mean, eventually somebody would have helped me, but it was so traumatic for me to just feel like so hopeless, you know. So, but now I can really thank God that he had sent my uncle to, you know, to bring me home. So, but it's not just that, you know, this was just like the beginning of uh, boosting my faith in God and ask him to help me when I needed his help. And so next experience was that um, one day my father is calling us inside the room. I have, uh, we are five brothers and one sister, and he called the whole family inside the room to say us goodbye. And, but you no, know, because he was living somewhere, because he thought he was gonna die actually. So my mother was there and he was sick with something, I don't know what it was, but he, he believed that this was his last hour. You know? So he wanted to make sure that he was gonna say goodbye to all of us. You can imagine the sadness in that moment of everyone. Because in those days, you know, the father, he would be like the provider, you know, and everyone was pretty much poor in those days, and if somebody didn't bring money, you would starve, you would not have enough to survive. So there was so much going on, you know, around us, and the fear and the pain, and it was hard to put into words. So, but because I had the experience, these uh, miracles were I would ask for something and God would do it for me. I did believe that uh, God would serve my father. See? And no one could convince me otherwise. I mean, if you know when a child is praying, it's very powerful. And uh, the child prayer is the most beautiful prayer anyone can do in this world, you know, as a child, because there is no doubts in your mind, you know. And so what I did was I ran out of the room and I keep on running and I was running. You know, I was just running because I thought uh, uh, maybe if I run, these things will just fly away or something. And at the same time, I was screaming, uh, yelling, I mean, at the top of my voice and talking to God asking God, save my father and don't let him die. I need my father. And to this day, I believe this was the reason why my dad was alive, still alive until three years ago. He died around eight years old. <laughs> so he lived, he was in the hospital and got this operation. Mm -hmm. So but I found this is so uplifting, you know, to know that uh, there is magic, you know, in life, and, you know. So, as a child, I believe anything is possible, you know, and, uh, 
And so I grew up with this strong belief that I'm not alone anymore. You know? and, and so, and uh, even though my childhood wasn't always so rosy all the time, because I, I was bullied after, since I was like uh, eight years old, and it lasted until maybe 13, you know. So, I mean, this are, it's a long time to be bullied you know, by other older kids. Because it was completely terror for me, you know, because I would go to school and I was told that I was going to be beaten up after school was, would be over. So I, I had to wait, you know, until I get out of, of the school, out of school. And then these kids would wait for me and I would just be beaten, you know. So just that wait was like so ter terrifying for a little child. Because I didn't know, yes? Um, why it happened uh, like that? Why they did it? Uh, the, it you was were different or what, what was that? It, it was just the environment, you know. Uh -huh. People being poor and have, uh, you know, uh, not too much uh, education mm -hmm. in those days. So, you know, if you were stronger, you will, uh, uh, you know, uh, use this, you know, to hurt other people. Just, I don't know what, what there is, was it? It was a reality in, in those days for a lot of people, I think, you know. So they would take, the, if they knew I had some money, they would take the money away. And, uh, but the beating was like uh, real, was physical. It wasn't just like a, a little slap, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it was like heavy slaps in the face and kicks, you know. You fall down and you start to get hurt. Sometimes you're bleeding, you know, you have to go home and get uh, patched up. Things like that, they last a long time. So, but I asked my brothers, all the brothers, to, to help me out. But the more I ask, the more I would get beaten up, right? Mm -hmm. So I stopped asking for that. But I knew I could ask God, because that was the only way for me to, to escape the danger, because Suddenly, I realized I could outsmart the kids you know, because I had this dialogue, dialogue, you know, with uh, God, and sometimes I would ask Him what to do, and and these ideas would come to me in, in that moment. I would ask for something, so I realized that I could uh, avoid a lot of, of be getting beaten by using my mind more, and so. I knew they would wait for me just uh, outside my house a lot of times. And when they saw me, they would just run to catch me. And there was a building in this area. Around the building, there was like a field. It was like a huge field with bushes and everything. So in my own time, I had dig a hole in the ground. I dig with a piece of metal. And I was uh, like a, a hole of like a mirror, deep and wide. So, and I could hide and, and inside this hole, you know, a lot of times. So, when I come and I see these guys waiting for me, they try to run and to catch me. But when I was like uh, turning around the building, and I would just go right in onto the field, and they were still uh, around the building. So they had no time to see me jump. So I, as soon as I would jump, I would stay there, I would cover myself, and they would just say, where did he go? Because, you know, there was no way that I could run so fast to, you know, that they would not see me. So they thought I would be hidden somewhere. And so they would look around, and I heard them so close to where I was, but they could never find me. I've done this like a dozen times, actually. And, uh, and that's how I survived. You know? So, and you know, a lot of times uh, it wouldn't work when uh, I wasn't near this place. This was my only refuge. But other times 
I just had no place to go, so they would catch me. So, but then, uh, uh, you know, time seemed to pass by quickly, and uh, I grew. You know, I grew up, and uh, so then I become eleven, twelve, thirteen. But when I got fourteen, I began to work. So I did some uh, physical work. And I was doing like a plumbing uh, profession, so I become like a plumber. But I become a super strong, so so I was super tall now and super strong. And so I I trained myself also a little bit, you know, to be able to defend myself. And and now I knew that. Uh, uh, people, the kids could not uh, beat me anymore because I was kind of stronger. And uh, somehow there was all this anger built up from all those years, you know. I was uh, abused and beaten. And I wanted to repay, uh, you know, these people, what they had done to me. So I waited, I waited for them, just like they waited for me, so I waited mm -hmm. for them. And when they come out, I would just, you know, go right where they were and start beating them up. And, uh, and sometimes I wouldn't stop, you know, until they would cry and they would say, stop, stop. And uh, sometimes we would become even unconscious and then I would stop, you see. Because I wanted them to suffer just the way I suffer. So, and now this is lasting uh, quite a few years actually because I'm fighting with everyone, you know. First I fought with the people who hurt me, but then I started fighting with other people too that I didn't even know them. Sometimes we would just sitting on the table and I see them laughing and I look at them and they look at me, so I'm thinking is they're laughing because of me somehow. So I would just go and just fight it and just beat them up, you know.